Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF calibrator with 16 years of experience. In today's video, we're looking at the new LED LCD TV from Panasonic, the GX800. If you like our reviews and want to see more of them and support our channel, then please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new content. The Panasonic GX800 LED LCD TV is available in screen sizes of 40, 50, 58 and 65 inches and is branded as bringing Hollywood to your home. So let's get straight into the review and look at the design first. While this is an LED LCD TV that costs £899 at the time of this review in August 2019, the build quality is very good for the price point. The GX800 uses edge lighting for its VA LCD panel and as such it means that the panel depth is very thin. Not quite OLED degrees of thinness but it gets close and the rear of the panel also follows recent OLED chassis designs with the bottom section sticking out further and housing the connections, electronics and speakers. The 6mm bezel is slightly recessed from the panel around the top and sides so it gives the edge of the screen an interesting design point. Then this meets the bottom of the panel and there is a 20mm solid bezel that runs the length of the bottom edge. There is a printed Panasonic logo in the centre of this with a power indicator LED to the left bottom edge. You can switch off this LED completely or have it set in a number of options within the menu. The TV stand is a metal plate with two rising legs that attach to the bottom of the panel. Down the back of each leg is room for cable management to give the TV a clean look from the front with no cables on show. There are visa points for wall mounting and the power cable is a detachable figure of 8 lead on the left side of the back panel. There are no covers like other Panasonic models to cover up the connection section. Overall the design is modern and the build quality is good for the price point with high quality plastics being used. The connections are on the right side of the rear panel in sideways and outwards configuration. Looking at the sideways facing first, we've got a common interface slot, headphone jack, two HDMI slots with ARC on HDMI 2, along with a USB and Ethernet port. The outwards facing connections are a second USB port, third HDMI slot and a digital optical output, component video input and one set of stereo audio RCA inputs. There are no satellite antennas, only an RF slot for terrestrial digital TV signals. The three HDMI inputs all handle 4K 60p444 signals and are HDCP 2.2 compliant with support for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG and Dolby Vision high dynamic range formats. And we'll cover this in more detail later. If you've ever used a Panasonic TV in the last 5 years, you will immediately find the remote control familiar. It's a black plastic affair with large buttons and a logical layout. To the top we have small buttons that cover power, picture, inputs, menu, text and apps. The row below has info and exit key and below these the most important buttons which are Netflix, Direct, Home and Guide which follow the directional and enter keys. We also have option and return keys just below these. There are colour keys next with the volume and channel rockers along with a mute key in the middle. To the bottom we have numerical keys, direct free view play button and player controls for HDMI CEC use or with Panasonic players. Overall, the remote fits with the market position and price point of the GX800B and it should last the lifetime of the TV. The best way to describe the menus on a Panasonic TV is probably comprehensive. If you are not someone who likes to have control of most of the parameters of a TV, then the menus here could be a little bit daunting. However, what we actually have here are in-depth menus where the vast majority of settings are set once and forget in nature or leave in default settings. Obviously, as AV enthusiasts, we are especially interested in the video and audio settings menus. Because the menus are so comprehensive, we'll just focus on those most important items here. First up we have the picture modes with True Cinema the most accurate to the industry standards. This means it's the closest to matching the image quality that your TV and films are mastered to. 
all other picture modes are inaccurate and too bright with blown out details and colours. Warm 2 is also the correct white balance setting for an accurate out of the box grayscale. In all picture modes the intelligent frame creation system is set to minimum as a default. If you want accurate 24 frames per second playback you need to go into the menu and change this to off. There are various settings which add in frame interpolation and soap opera effect and you could experiment with these for fast moving sports or video images but for film we need to stay away from frame interpolation and soap opera effect. Clear motion adjusts the backlight to introduce black frame insertion effect and this also darkens the image slightly. Flicker is more noticeable with lower frame rate material and could be an issue for some users. We didn't personally feel it was required. It is important that you have the adaptive backlight control at least set to minimum for the better black levels through local dimming. We did notice at maximum there were brightness fluctuations visible between bright and dark scenes but in the middle and minimum settings this was less noticeable and produced the best black levels. If switched off we get the native black levels of the panel but this also highlights the uneven uniformity of the backlight and its patchiness and blooming. Within the advanced menus we get detailed calibration controls for grayscale, white balance, colour and colour management. These allow accurate adjustment for professionals or enthusiasts with the correct equipment to calibrate the image properly. The HDR brightness settings are interesting for static metadata sources. Dynamic HDR effect is very similar to the HDR optimizer on Panasonic players and makes sure that static metadata content is optimized per scene for brightness and color by adjusting the tone map. Obviously this is greyed out when HDR plus and Dolby Vision dynamic metadata signals are being received by the GX800. Within the sound menu there is a direct on off option for Dolby Atmos playback of suitable content. Under the HDMI 2.1 menu item, remembering that this is not an HDMI 2.1 capable TV, you have the low latency option for gaming input lag. As we always do within our reviews we measure the out of the box picture presets to find those that get as close as possible to the industry standards. The idea of this is that the TV must get close to these standards in at least one of its picture modes so end users can see content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Calibration is a goal for some users but for the majority this is not an option so actually knowing how accurate the out of the box presets are is very important in any honest TV review. Looking at the grayscale tracking first of all and the GX800 provides a reasonable result in the true cinema and warm two settings. Blue and green are a little too high in the mix as the image gets brighter and as such our delta E errors go over the visible threshold of 3 from 60% luminance upwards. As such we can see a cyan tint to white and brighter sections of the image when watching normal content. This however will pass most normal viewers by as it is subtle and not as obvious as a green or yellow tint within an image. The colour gamut results for Rec. 709 HD colour are affected by the cyan push with the saturation tracking points moving towards cyan with the main issue being under saturation of red. Magenta has also introduced a large hue error which will also affect on screen reds. However once again these errors are much harder to actually see within on screen content such as TV and film viewing so we doubt that normal viewers would ever see any issues with accuracy. As an out of the box setting the true cinema and warm to settings are very good for a TV of this price point and performance. Of course we can calibrate the GX800 and we have very good calibration controls included within the menus. Starting with the grayscale we can see that reference results are possible using the controls available. Tracking was perfect at every brightness level and delta E errors are all well under 1 which means any errors are invisible to the eye. Our only slight issue is with gamma not tracking completely level at BT1886 but once again this is unseen to the eye with actual viewing content. Given the issues we also had with the out of the box colour gamut with the cyan push, correcting the grayscale has resolved those issues with colour points hitting most of the saturation points or getting extremely close. The 100% points are off and cannot be adjusted as those are the native points of the panel being used but we rarely have any primary colour at 100% intensity with any TV or film content so this is not really an issue. 
More important are the 75% and below points, which actually make up the image we view most often, and here the GX800 is accurate enough to the Rec. 709 gamut after calibration. Our overall results are close to reference with an average Delta E of 1.2 for grayscale and gamma tracking, and within a Rec. 709 color checker, an average of 1.25, so both results are well under the threshold of 3. Moving to HDR and the results from the GX800 is a little disappointing for an LED LCD set. We put this down to the edge lighting being used and a peak brightness of 291 nits in the True Cinema Accurate D65 setting. Looking at the EOTF results, we can see that the GX800B has a reduced peak brightness, so the tracking is a tad high for the main PQ standard, and then rolls off pretty steeply to try and fit as much detail and highlights within the available image brightness. This is obviously with static metadata HDR signals. The tone mapping is a little higher or brighter than normal, and we presume this is to give the image a pop that makes up for the lack of peak brightness. The wide colour gamut coverage is also slightly disappointing, as the GX800B is not capable of reaching the DCI P3 wide colour gamut coverage. But although that is the case, the colour points on the tracking chart do get pretty close in the lower saturation points and track there or thereabouts, and this bodes well for some good colour reproduction with actual content. P3 coverage is 88% XY and 95% UV, with BT2020 coverage at 65% XY and 74% UV. The overall native contrast of the GX800 is 4,578 to 1. One thing we constantly express in our reviews is that there is no such thing as a perfect TV, and there are issues and traits to the different technologies also being used to make these TVs. LED LCD TVs have been around for quite some time now, and they have well-known technical drawbacks. The GX800 is an edge-lit TV, which means it has to spread the light from the edge to fill the entire screen, and this will impact on the panel uniformity. In the case of the GX800, we found the bottom screen corners were brighter than the rest of the screen, and in a pitch black room with local dimming switch to off, the backlight was patchy and inconsistent. This did improve with the local dimming engaged. The Sharp TV next to the GX800 uses a direct LED backlight, but it has no local dimming control, and its contrast is only half that of the Panasonic. On the GX800, we did notice some banding and mild dirty screen effect, with content that has one colour filling the majority of the screen, like football or blue skies. And the viewing angles were also poor, with colour shift and contrast issues from as little as 20 degrees off axis, as after all, this is a VA panel. However, most of these issues are related to the technical limitations of LCD TVs, and something all buyers must be aware of when considering such a TV. These are also issues that are more noticeable when using the TV in a pitch black room. Not all LCDs are light cannons with HDR content, and under £1,000 this is evident when the GX800 is in the most accurate picture mode with a peak brightness of just 300 nits. The advantages here with the GX800 is that it accepts both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision dynamic metadata standards, which are best suited to TVs like this Panasonic. The metadata provides the TV with scene-by-scene -scene information on maximum brightness as the GX800 then maps the image to its image capabilities to provide the best possible HDR picture. With such material, the GX800 does provide a very decent HDR image that, while not as bright as the more expensive OLED and LED LCD TVs out there, for the price point, the Panasonic looks very good when viewed in a normally lit room and directly in front of the TV. With the more common HDR10 static metadata content, the Panasonic does struggle a little more in providing as much detail in the brighter areas of the image, but at the same time, we found that when side by side with a sharp LED LCD, it has far more shadow detail and less clipping in the black areas of the image. The GX800 also has excellent colour reproduction when viewed from directly in front of the TV, with skin tones looking natural and lifelike. 
the best out of the box settings for SDR and HDR content get pretty close to the standards with strong colour reproduction and decent blacks. The GX800 is best suited to rooms with some ambient light or bias lighting behind the TV and not pitch black rooms. In a suitably bright room with normal TV and streaming material, the Panasonic is capable of decent image quality with good upscaling and motion performance. Motion is strong with 24 frames per second material, looking very good with no frame skipping with intelligent frame creation switched off. We also didn't notice any other obvious issues with frame skipping or dropping with IFC turned on, but artifacts are present with soap opera effect in the higher settings. However, overall we found motion to be very good indeed with this level of TV. In side by side testing with a similar priced Sharp TV with a direct LED backlight, the Panasonic was strong in all image areas in comparison with the most accurate blacks, midtones and highlights along with better above black detail retrieval and far superior contrast and colour performance. Panasonic is a couple hundred pounds more expensive over the Sharp but shows that when engineered properly the Edgelit GX800 with its local dimming is far superior in terms of dynamic range and contrast over the direct lit Sharp but also Panasonic's expertise in colour also shines through. However, it should be noted that the GX800's colour reproduction does not fully cover the wide colour gamuts of 4K as it stands, but at the price point it certainly offers superior accuracy over some of its peers, especially the Sharp next to it which has a yellow tint even after calibration. The Edge Lit GX800 is a good quality LCD TV for use in a normal living room and in its most accurate picture modes and watched directly from the front of the TV. It provides a very accurate image for most normal users. HDR is a little dimmer than more expensive models but given the use of HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision dynamic metadata systems, the Panasonic is capable of producing dynamic images with highlights and details in brighter areas of the image but with an overall dimmer APL in comparison to more expensive OLED and LCD screens. Colours on the other hand are good in HDR playback modes for the price point and added to good SDR and decent image quality in normal viewing conditions. The GX800 does give an honest account of itself. Blacks are not inky deep but they are consistent and black bars appear as black, there's no blooming lighting up the bars for example. Greys are good with decent shadow detail retrieval and detailed midtones add to the decent contrast levels. This is no OLED when it comes to the image dynamics and black levels but for an LCD TV with edge lighting in normal viewing conditions, the GX800 offers a decent performance for the majority of normal users. The GX800 is a top tier LED LCD TV for Panasonic in 2019 but it shouldn't be mistaken for a replacement to the likes of the previous DX902 model. This is a TV built to a price point and using the latest dynamic metadata technologies to provide a reasonable HDR performance at a much lower price point than today's OLED TVs and the flagship LCDs of the past. As such, being built to a price point means that compromises have to be made with the type of backlight and other features. The use of edge LED lighting and a VA panel allow for a very slim design for an LCD TV but in terms of performance we do have a few drawbacks such as panel uniformity and the viewing angle limitations of a VA panel. However, the Panasonic GX800 is also one of the first TVs at its price point to feature both Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus dynamic metadata which can adjust the image performance to get the very best possible HDR image from the GX800. As a TV for watching movies in a pitch black room, this model really struggles to produce deep blacks with the edge lighting and panel uniformity is patchy at best, however watching in a room with ambient or bias lighting can mitigate these issues. As such we'd recommend using and watching the GX800 in normal lighting to get the best performance without introducing obvious issues. Watching directly in front of the TV gives the best results for colour reproduction which is very good for SDR and HDR playback. Upscaling, motion and video processing is also excellent at the price point. 
Add to this a basic but stable smart TV system with free view play, catch up and HDR capable playback from Amazon, Netflix and YouTube apps and for £899 price point at the time of this review in August 2019, you have a very good LCD TV package. Coming back to our point that there is no perfect TV that does everything to perfection, what we have here is a TV that is designed for a market position, driven by price and trying to get the best performance at that level, given the technology and its flaws. As such, if you stay away from watching off axes and in a pitch black room, you can avoid the main issues we had with the Panasonic GX800 and in return you get a very good SDR picture performance and HDR that is the best you will get from an edgelet TV at the current price point. Thanks to working with both dynamic metadata HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision systems, the GX800 can produce images without clipping details in the blacks or highlights. They're not close to the brightest or most dynamic HDR images available in more expensive TVs, but they are consistent and detailed without the flaws of dim looking static metadata HDR images. Along with Amazon providing both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision for most of its content, along with Netflix supporting Dolby Vision, you already have a decent library of suitable dynamic metadata content to watch on the GX800. Overall, taking into account the compromises, technical limits and the performance on offer, the Panasonic GX800 is a solid mid-market TV with strong SDR picture quality along with HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata picture quality to match the TV's performance capabilities. As such, we feel it's worthy of an 8 out of 10 score given the price point and performance, but it just misses out on a badge award on this occasion.